serving up appropriate music, ladies and gentlemen. Peace is flowing like a river under the dome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're making to the um, uh, the uh, uh, you're good, Paul. Real estate. I'll come. I, I thought it was appropriate music, and it was suggested by several high-ranking people. <laughs> so, <laughs> the lieutenant uh, governor uh, double says. By the way, we are live also on Super Talk TV, and you can uh, b- b- get that immediately without any cost at all. Supertalk uh, FM forward slash watch. It is available on, let's see, on the screen, YouTube, Roku, Fire TV, Alexa, Amazon, everywhere else. As a matter of fact, we're also working to to get it on uh, a couple of uh, uh, Delta water faucets, and and you can just wireless there, and I think we'll have that achieved by next week. So, all right, tell me about what happened yesterday. Well, we had a very good day for Mississippi, Paul. Uh, um, Our... Our Senate met, as you know, we were in until about 6.30 last night. Uh, when we came in, our senators um, were prepared, I'd say it would be an understatement, to uh, override any veto. And um, the night before, the governor called uh, Philip Gunn and I down to the, to the mansion, and we had had a couple of three hours worth of discussions about uh, where we were going, what the state was doing, and uh, he asked us to postpone any veto vote and any veto at this point in time and work towards a solution to dis- distribute these uh, $1.25 billion of the $2.3 billion we got. And uh, we had our senators down, and uh, Philip met with his members of the House, and we, we agreed to do that. And uh, we're we're working towards uh, five days of getting a plan from the governor, working with the plans that we, we have going as well, and uh, distributing the funds. I'm very pleased today uh, we will we will come out and, and draft and pass out of the Senate the uh, Back to Business Mississippi Grant Program. Uh, it's $100 million for small, for small Mississippi businesses. Uh, businesses with less than 50 employees will get anywhere from 1000 to $25,000 to help them uh, bridge the gap here that they've been they've been suffering with, and we're. I was looking at it the other day, Paul. We're real. We're, we're the third state, I think, to actually start appropriating money. Uh-huh. Um, you know, we got this money two weeks ago, and now we're already. We'll pass this legislation. It's got to go to the House. Uh, l- Hopefully, l- they'll. Let me ask pass you this: Can you can you do that? Write that check and send that check out without completing this process of the agreement that is at hand now and and can you do that today come in do the reconsideration and then uh, put that put that bill kill that bill we're actually not going to kill the bill that we passed uh with, under our agreement with the governor the bill that we passed a week ago stays exactly as it was uh, what we're going to do is add on this back to business grant program to that bill it'll actually be an addition uh, it'll go from us to the House. The House will do their work, and, and mm-hmm. I'm giving you the broad outlines here of what, what we're working on. And that bill, that bill with the bill we passed a week ago, plus this back-to-business $100 million for businesses, will go to the governor for a signature. So the governor will, has agreed to sign that bill? Well, I guess I assume that he will. We, had, we really didn't talk about that. We talked about whether or not to put it off so that we could go into negotiations and discussions about other things that he wants. Uh, he was meeting with his people yesterday. I talked to him, and mm-hmm. uh, he's coming up with plans that he wants to do. We've got things that we are we're, – Paul, we're meeting with the counties, the cities, the hospitals. Uh, we met with casinos yesterday on opening up. Uh, a whole series of different things. You'll see hearings. We had a hearing yesterday on the workforce making sure we could get our workforce money out faster. Uh, the Senate had a hearing on that. Um, you'll see a lot of work done over this next several days in conjunction with what the governor has, has coming from his restart uh, Mississippi group. So we're working in unison on that, but a lot of activity going on right now. Yeah. What is the process? And I, and I was reading here $15,000 to if you have a business that has 100 employees or less. And up to a twenty-five thousand dollars grant. And again, we're talking about barbers and, and and cosmetologists and a lot of other people. What's the process for them? Because there are a lot of businesses out there who are stung on the first uh, amount right. of money they gave out real fast. So there's a right. lot of calls that we get saying, "All right, I understand this money's here. We want to make sure when the bickering is over, I, I want to be proactive and get that money." What's that process? Well, we, we've already met with one of the state, a state agency will be running this, Paul, and it'll be audited by the state auditor, as, as we have discussed previously. And um, 
you, you'll see uh, we have drafted part of a uh, application form for that. That'll come as soon as this bill is completed here. The House has to do its work and it mm -hmm. goes to the governor for its signature. So I expect that'll be ready. Those will be ready next week. Uh, the money has already been appropriate, will be appropriated by then. So uh, we, in our discussions, those will be online uh, applications, um, a good bit simpler than the federal ones. Uh, uh, I, I think we've honed down to where uh, you just have to tell us you've been working in Mississippi and that you've uh, had these losses and sign it, sign it like yeah. you would a tax return and, and they're going to send you a check. The, what is the, how does the grant program work? That a grant, as you know, is that means it doesn't get, that means you don't have to pay it back. Right. <laughs> Basically. Right. So this, this so money will go. Just, and we why have isn't it just 35,000? Uh, I'm sorry. Why is it just combined? What's the, how do you differentiate the 15,000 from the, uh, from the uh, 25,000? Well, it is 1,000 to 25,000, depending on what your losses are. Okay. Just I let know. me give you an example, Paul. If you, you didn't if say you that were, in the story. Well, you know, you, thank goodness we got radio, Paul, so you can get there, things there you straight. Go. Um, <laughs> so what what we said was 1,000 to uh, to uh, 25,000. And for example, if you were a cosmetologist and you rented your space and you were making uh, $3,000 a month renting your space, and <clears throat> you would get $3,000 a month plus uh, your rent. Uh, 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 rent expenses from this amount. So we would pay you $3,000 a month to carry you over for, for the months of March, April, and May. That's kind of how the process is. And $25,000, obviously this is not aimed at Nissan and those, this is aimed at small businesses, Paul. Mm -hmm. And you know, all, they've had other restaurants have had much greater losses in this, but this is all the money that we can give them. But clearly this is a step in the right direction and it will help some of them stay in business, Paul. It may not have made it. I, I hope so. Did you, and I know it's early because it only happened yesterday. Did you happen to get any feedback at all, how it went as far as some of the restaurants? The, the restaurants, um, are obviously have tens of thousands of employees. Um, these, this money will help them. Uh, they have gotten federal money that will help them. Um, my indications from them are they are ready to reopen. And in our discussions, it's not, you just can't flip the switch on this, Paul. Uh, like in the casinos, they need about two weeks to get everything lined up, uh, put put the uh, shields in place, train their employees. Mm -hmm. You can't just flip the switch and have this go. And so we're real concerned about giving them some time frames out. Like we're going to shoot for you to be open the next day, and here's some money to carry you until then. So you feel, I, I anticipate. You feel, pretty good. you feel pretty good by the 1st of June they'll be open in some some capacity. Yes, uh, I, I do. We, we continue to struggle and everybody needs to realize the governor is under tremendous pressure, Paul, and that nobody else would want to be there. I can tell you that he, he has got to make these literally life and death and economic life and death decisions on a daily basis. We're all watching you report every day on how many we have, how many people died, uh, where we have hot spots. Uh, we have different cities. Uh, Hattiesburg may not open. Uh, Ocean Springs did open. So you have different spots that are opening around the state sporadically. And it's, there's a lot of moving parts to this, but I, I see us gradually coming back open. And I only hope that you, you got a really educated listening group there. I only hope that you, that everyone will realize that being open doesn't mean you have to stop taking care of yourself. You know, you need to well, wear your mask. Even more important, yeah. It is because if we're going to release this kind of uh, this ourselves to make our own personal decisions, which we should, we better we better darn be careful uh, and take care of ourselves and take care of the people we're talking to. Let me ask you about the rest of the business that has to be taken care of uh, as far as the legislative session. Um, you guys are coming back in today. I'm not sure how long the session will, uh, either in the House or Senate, but well, can we talk more about that and also the appropriation process for the next fiscal year? When we come back yeah. with the Lieutenant Governor, Delbert Hoseman, as peace is flowing like a river under the dome, <laughs> we'll be back. Uh, back with the <laughs> Lieutenant Governor and, and uh, our video and uh, VIP gala guest line, of course, Trustmark Small Business Experts there for you. Help you get back to business, Trustmark.com, member FDIC. And again, we're live on Supertalk uh, FM FM uh, forward slash watch on TV as well. But again, the lieutenant governor announcing, uh, again, $100 million 
uh, program to be added to this. How fast do you think those checks, if, if, if the businesses do what they're supposed to do, you think they could get that check in the bill in two weeks? We, uh, in, the, in the legislation we were working on last night with Senator Harkins and Senator Hobson, who have been our, our lead in the Senate, uh, mm-hmm. we put that they would immediately provide the form. So uh, as fast as immediately is, um, the legislation come out today, we, we will be uh, pushing very hard for them to do that quickly. And I would imagine that is in agreement. You guys have talked to the House and, and Speaker Gunn is in accordance with that? Oh, Speaker Gunn, and they're drafting their bill as well. Um, and, and those two bills will actually be go to a conference report with three senators and three <clears throat> members of the House. Mm-hmm. So they'll have their input as well. We'll, we'll have ours out today. I, I hope this will come very quickly. Probably Monday when, when we start to merge the two together. Uh, that's about the time frame that we'll both do our work, hard work today. Yep. Uh, well, you know, uh, Paul, we're also working. Uh, our immediate needs, uh, I think, are to address our cities and our counties uh, who have been out of pocket this this money and our hospitals. So you'll see uh, Senator Hobson, Senator Harkin, Senator Polk, the rest of those working on the immediate needs of the people who have had to write checks to get them to get their get reimbursements out of this one point two five billion that we've got. Then you'll see um, Senator Carter, Senator Delano and others leading there and with Senator Barr on the education front on distance learning. Those that will come shortly after this. So we'll get into that process now of looking at uh, iPads and, and Samsungs for students, those you. kinds of things, broadband. So we'll, we'll do this in stages. The first is, a, like you always know, is stop the bleeding. And right now our hospital cities and counties are bleeding and our, and our small businesses are. So we want to address that first. And that's what you'll see this next week. We'll have hearings on a number of these. And then, then we'll be drafting our legislation the week after that on some of these. The uh, MEMA and also the Mississippi Department of Health, as far as their financial status, is, is, is it okay? Or are they going to need some additional funding? They're, they're both good. And uh, uh, both Philip and I talked to them very peri- periodically. I was mm-hmm. with them yesterday, talking to them yesterday about this. Um, <clears throat> the Department of Health will need some, what I guess you better call trackers, uh, when we're doing this testing, you know, we're, we're actually done a lot of testing. You were just reporting on that in Mississippi. But where we have someone that has the virus, they then will need trackers. Who did you talk to? Where have you been? That kind of thing. So that's the only help that, uh, uh, that uh, Dr. Dobbs has asked us for. That will be forthcoming from the legislature. Uh, on MEMA, we have two things that we're doing an, imme- an immediacy, which would be to make sure we've covered up for their expenses for PPE. And then we're going to propose that we uh, have 31 days of PPE placed in, in, a, um, in a controlled environment uh, warehouse so that we never have to get here again. Uh, and that will be in addition to whatever hospitals and everybody else holds, but we want to hold 30, uh, 31 days I got you. Uh, as a backlog. Let me, let me ask you this. The, uh, the agreement, apparently, the call came in from the governor Wednesday afternoon. Was that about right and, and said, okay, let's get together and meet on this one. Tell me a little bit about it because as, as stockholders in the state, all of us as taxpayers, is is this going to be the first of other where you guys get together and communicate? Uh, was this a one-time shot? Is this uh, – uh, do we, the, were, are the relationships now at least a little bit better, or where are we with that? And your thoughts? Uh, well, uh, the governor's invited me over for lunch on Tuesday. Now, that doesn't sound like a big thing, but it's a really big deal to me because every day I go into the Capitol at 830, and uh, the First Baptist Church brings me a styrofoam box about 12 of whatever they cooked, and I leave it to 830 at night. So to be invited over for a real lunch is a big deal for me, and I'm looking forward mm-hmm. to being with him on Tuesday. So I th- I, was the uh, was the speaker uh, not invited at all? Speaker will be with me. It'll okay. be the speaker I just, and I together. I, I just I just wonder if he was going to be invited in it also. So uh, <laughs> let me get back to the let me, let me get back to the appropriation part of this because you guys got to make some hard decisions on this, and the appropriation process has to be completed before you guys sign and die. So where where are we with that that whole thing? On uh, how do you put numbers on there? We, uh, you can't, Paul, and uh, uh, our initial numbers, as you know, we were over $100 million ahead going into March, and uh, that evaporated. Um, we have, we, we sent a letter, uh, Speaker and I did, sent a letter out uh, about two weeks ago to all of the 
all of the state agencies, all 200 of them, to hold the money uh, as much as they could. Don't buy anything you don't have to. Uh, don't you do any extra expenditures that are not absolutely necessary, and they have responded favorably to that. Uh, we clearly are going to be hundreds of millions of dollars short of, of our projections. Um, um, we are, we're going to wait until the money, until the, the f reports come out on June the 10th, and then we'll set the budget. Uh, that is not going to be a pleasant two weeks for members of the legislature. Uh, on things that many of them feel very strongly and deeply about will not be able to be funded uh, at the levels they would like to have them funded. Yeah. Uh, I think you've heard... Um, there... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I think you've heard us. My, my priorities are, are education, safety, health care, and business. And, and those, those where I think that's where we've got to prioritize. And then other things that I would love to have done and had really was looking forward to and had started the process of, to do uh, we may have to wait until next January. Well, if we could get the casinos back open, you know, there's the, the other thing, too, is people get a little bit weak. We were getting money on the lottery. The lottery was click, uh, clicking along pretty darn good, and I think that's just kind of stalled out uh, tremendously, too. I'm not even sure what the revenue is anymore from uh, from that. But as we get back and it begins to uh, percolate a little bit more, uh, it, it's certainly going to be helpful, but I, I think it's going to be a while, don't you, that uh, before this thing is back to normal uh, on an economic basis? Yeah, we meet with the state economists and the, and the Department of Revenue, and their indications are that uh, we're, we're going to take this major hit here this quarter. This, this March, April, May, June, uh, we're, mm -hmm. we're going to take a major hit. Then coming out of this more of a level, uh, for the next quarter, next three months, uh, you could see the legislature back in October uh, tinkering with the budget again because it's so uncertain. We, we see leveling out in the in the last three months of the year uh, and, and big back on our feet uh, the first of next year. So we're, we're going to try to do a budget, you know, projecting out through June of 20, you know, 21. And uh, it's um, it's difficult, it's going to be difficult for us to do. And it, it, there will be. Uh, the possibility we'll have to come back in and do some adjustments to it, yeah. ho hopefully up. Everybody's talking about this second wave. And again, Lieutenant Governor um, Delbert Hoseman is my guest this morning. People are talking about the second wave if it does happen, and it, and it possibly could because a lot of people are out there now. Are you guys talking about that? Is there there the second is plan B maybe to shut the government back down again, or is that just not in the equation at all? No, we are discussing Plan B, uh, and and the things we're discussing are um, we'll be meeting with our educators. Of course, uh, you could, uh, Paul. I have been in about fifty different classes now, from St. Martin on the coast to Hernando to from Columbus to Scott County. I go mm -hmm. and during the day I, I zoom into a class, Spanish sometimes, uh, government, math, and I, I listen and talk to the students about what they're doing, and I ask them each time what. Uh, how do you like this distance learning? Do you would you like to continue this? And and I will tell you the reports are I'd say sixty to seventy percent say look <clears throat> this is fine but we really want to be back in school. It's easier for the teacher to come to my desk if I have a problem. I miss mm -hmm. my schoolmates. I miss the social aspects. And only about ten percent say they'd like to go to full distance learning. But in there, a lot of them say it would be okay to do some distance learning. So what could happen here, Paul? We, we could be at where we were having class for part of a day for part of our students and the ne next part of the day for other students, and they were distance learning for some special courses, like an AP course or something. Mm -hmm. You know, those things are in plan. We're in planning for the election. You know, how are we going to conduct an election if we got this coronavirus, and how are we going to elect our president? Uh, Senator Branning is, is leading, uh, leading that for our, for our, our Senate. We're, there are a lot of plannings going on, the what ifs, and I'm... We uh, hope it doesn't. When we pray it doesn't, but we better yeah. prepare for it. Lots of things to talk about, and one of the one of those things we'll see some changes in education too. Maybe the school year revamp, like the one in Corinth. There are a lot of different options on the yes. table, and we'll keep you informed as you have always, Delbert Hosman, the Lieutenant Governor of the state. I thank you, sir. Continue the peace flowing under the. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Well, we'll see. You